Well, there's been a shift in the market and the shift in the mind of Canadians with the BOC delivering its heavy hand and delivering a second rate cut in the course of just under 60 days. Only 12 months removed from increasing the overnight rate to 5%, we're now sitting at a cool 4.5%. And that has people grateful and thankful from thinking that we are over the hump. Now, depending on which side of the fence you are, you might be thinking, well, the best is yet to come, or you might be thinking, well, there's some serious freaking issues and we need to see rates go down sooner or people will be in hot water. You could be on both sides. Either way, we're going to address the rate decreases that we've seen, and more importantly, where rates could go according to the big banks. Also, do you go fixed or variable? We're gonna answer a lot of questions in this video, so stay tuned. Now, as of the week following the BOC's rate decrease, more on that in the video linked below in case you're wondering, there are multiple banks and forward markets that are suggesting that we still have yet to see 1.75% of rate reductions. That's 175 basis points over the course of the next 24 months. Now, that's based on the forward data. More on that, see the chart above. Now, this of course can change based on a variety of market factors. As we know, we've seen how quickly we've flipped off in the last six months of rates potentially going up, potentially going down, but this is where we stand today. So we're going to assess today's situation. In theory, it typically takes about 12 months to come down through a rate cycle, but in practice, those timelines can vary. And so, of course, this could be different from last time around. And this is why we're seeing most of the market projections and forecasts looking outward as far as 24 months to see rate cuts happen. TD and CIBC's economists just recently came out and brought out their predictions and they suggested 1.75%. Now, some of the other banks vary with the highest projection being from BMO Bank, which sees 1% reduction, but everyone's on the same page. They see in the next 18 to 24 months, rate reductions coming. So the question mark is, with the potential of rate cuts coming, how do you actually pick a mortgage product today in this rate environment? Now, before we get into that, the impact on the actual housing market in theory right now is much more psychological than it is in reality. And the reason for that is because we've seen fixed interest rates tumble over 1% in the better part of the last six months. That's right, around Christmas times, we saw the average advertised three-year fixed rate just above 6%. And now we're starting to see advertised rates in the low 5%. And after some discounts and discretionary negotiations, we're even seeing them below 5% for a 30-year uninsured mortgage. That's a decline of 1%. Now, if you don't know already, right now, Canadians qualify based on the lowest rate that they can take that's available. And as it stands right now, the lowest rate still continues to be the fixed rate mortgage. There's not much of a spread right now between the three-year fixed and the five-year fixed. And so most Canadians are opting for the shorter term to give themselves more flexibility. That being said, the reason we haven't seen this dramatic impact on the housing market just with these two rate drops is because those rate drops had no impact on people's ability to qualify. Fixed rates still give you the extra amount of money that you're looking for right now. Now, there's also been many that have come out and said that the fixed rates could be getting relatively close to what their bottom is and foresee fixed rates coming down only a quarter to a half percent below where we're at today, which suggests that the uninsured fixed rate could be somewhere around four and a half percent in the next 12 to 24 months. A big part of that has to do with funding costs. You see, with mortgage volumes being much lower right now across the board for mortgage renewals, purchases, and any other transaction, lenders are duking it out and they have been duking it out. With a spring market that hasn't been off the charts with a lot of purchases, mortgage volumes are low. So they've cut their funding costs in order to continue to pump as much volume as they can through the markets, which basically says that when they stop cutting their funding costs, when volumes increase, there won't be as much weighed down on the fixed rate, at least according to the forward markets right now. Now, what's even more interesting is that the current rate projections on fixed rates are for them to actually go down and start to swing back up in that same two to three year timeline as we're talking about right now. And in fact, see fixed rates come back sooner in terms of increases than variable interest rates, which brings us back to a question. Where is the value today and how are you picking a mortgage rate product in this type of a rate environment? Now, first things first, let's talk about the current widely available uninsured mortgage rates versus insured. If you're taking an uninsured mortgage, it typically means you're taking a 30-year amortization, a purchase over a million dollars, or you're putting down more than 20%. An insured mortgage is when you're putting down less than 20% on the property, and typically you get better discounts because you're insuring that mortgage, which means you're paying for CMHC or one of the three insurance agencies to essentially help you qualify for a loan. When you do that, it costs 
costs the banks less money and it provides them with an additional level of protection, which decreases the actual mortgage costs. So for the sake of today's conversation, we're gonna focus on uninsured mortgages because that's the vast majority of what we see in the markets right now. Now, widely available in the marketplace, the best discounts that you're seeing in variable rate mortgages is around prime minus 50 to prime minus 70. There's a range because it depends on the person's ability to qualify, but that's what we're seeing in this market. And we've seen some discounts go as low as prime minus 80 and 85, but this depends on if you're taking 25 years versus 30 years, 25 being lower interest rates than a 30 year mark. Compare that to a current fixed rate in the five to five and a quarter percent range. We'll use 5% for today's conversation over a 25 year amortization because many people can get that on a 25 year amortization today. The question mark is, well, do I start with what would be today just under 6%, so 5.85 versus 5% today? and which one is going to save me or make me or cost me the most amount of money. Now, we all know when picking a mortgage product, it's not all about the cost. There are other things to consider, such as repayments, flexibility, the ability to adjust or lock into your terms, your personal timeline and your situation, which is honestly the most important thing. I think that most people get too wrapped up in terms of mortgages by picking it based on the cost alone and they don't actually consider their personal situation. So you need to be thinking about your tolerance, your plans and your future when you're looking at those options. Now I'm looking at a chart right now which shows the path to the 2.75%. And as I mentioned, BMO versus the others show about a 0.75% spread from the bottom, which means the overnight rate would be as high as 3.5% or as low as 2.75% based on the current market projections. And that's looking at the end of Q4 2025 in these projections, which puts us only a year and a half. So 18 months from today, if everything goes smooth. Now we know that things don't work perfectly all the time, but if we're considering that math, if you were to take a variable rate today and you were at prime minus, let's say 75, you got a smoking deal on that mortgage. Prime today is sitting at about 6.7% at most lenders, that's putting you at a discounted rate of 5.95%, or if you were to take the 25 year amortization, about 5.85% today. Now in the worst case scenario of a 1% reduction, if you took that three year fixed at the 5% range, that would mean at the end of this cycle, so in the 18 months, according to the projections, that means your rate would be as low as 4.6% based on the worst possible outcome. And another three quarters below that, putting you just under 4%, should rates go all the way down another 1.75% below where we're at today? Well, that begs the question, would it be better to pay less today to have a certainty with interest rates at the 5% or would it be better to pay more today and obviously look at the numbers to see which one is going to make you or save you the most money. Now we've done the math for you to help you and make sure you know exactly what you can do. So let's break it all down and look at this hypothetical scenario and ask ourselves a question. Do we do the three year fixed on a $500,000 loan or we take the variable rate mortgage today? I'll talk about what type of variable rate in a second. The three year fixed right now, comes in at a clear second place. Now, by the way, before I get into this, the three-year fixed, we also looked at the five-year fixed in the four years when we were comparing our analysis, and we were assuming that this person did not break their mortgage throughout the term. Those are other things to consider. So the three-year fixed right now comes into a second place when we're considering a $500,000 mortgage on a 25-year amortization right now. In this hypothetical scenario, we compared it against a prime minus 85%. There's a cost increase of about $3,300 of taking the three-year fixed versus the five-year variable. Now, for a lot of people, that certainty is worth $3,300 for them. They'd rather have that cost certainty and know exactly what they're dealing with versus the flexibility or the possibility of rates going down. But the other side of the market might suggest they prefer to have the flexibility that comes with a variable rate mortgage. Now, remember this, before you go out and just take your variable rate or your fixed rate mortgage today, there's a few things you need to consider. That variable rate mortgage comes in two different flavors, if you don't recall. There's the adjustable payment and then there's the fixed payment. And they have different outcomes depending on how you do this. Now, we're talking about an adjustable where your payments go down as the prime goes down. But you could also consider to choose what's called the fixed payment or variable rate payment, which comes with most of the big banks, such as RBC, TD, CIBC, and BMO. And in these circumstances, you keep your payments the same, which would mean that you're actually paying a higher amount of principal. Now in that circumstance, obviously you'd pay off more principal over the term than what the scenario I'm showing you is. In this particular scenario, I'm assuming that you're wanting your payments to go down throughout the entire term itself. Now, if you're considering between the two options right now, and you're a little bit uncertain, one of the big questions I try to ask people at the end of the day is what would make you sleep better at night? Is knowing exactly what you're paying at all times and cost certainty is there for a lot of families, that's pretty important. Or is it having flexibility 
flexibility and the possibility of saving money. If flexibility is important, well, we always know that the variable rate mortgage only has a three month interest penalty. So your costs are typically way lower. All in all, when you compare that against a fixed rate mortgage, which could trigger an interest rate differential penalty where you could be paying four to 5% of that 500 grand, which is like 20 to $25,000, a variable rate mortgage for flexibility purposes could provide a lot more comfort for a lot of families. Notwithstanding the fact that you can actually lock in in the middle of the term if rates were substantially lower at that time. One thing to keep in mind is that different banks and lenders have different lock-in policies. So that's something that we always review with you as our clients. What do you take of this data? What does this actually mean? Well, first and foremost, there's no doubt right now that the Bank of Canada is going to continue decreasing interest rates. Not only did the Bank of Canada take a completely different and more subdued tone in this general meeting, which was a lot more relaxed and a lot less concerned about the potential of rates going up, but we're also starting to see the negative effects of rates being so high really work its way through the economy. With unemployment being up, with jobs being down, generally speaking, with people being in a tough position, the bank has no choice but to start to react. Bank of Canada is absolutely going to lower interest rates. The big question, obviously, though, is how do you make this decision for yourself? And in the end, I think that you make this decision by considering your personal circumstance above anything else. You're gonna get great rates in terms if you work with someone great like our team or another mortgage broker is actually looking out for you or you negotiate the terms on your behalf. What you really need to know, as I mentioned, is what is your time horizon? What is the likelihood that you could break, move, change if, if there's portability in your mortgage? Are you stable in your job situation or family situation right now? Is there a possibility that you might see an adjustment at that point right there? And are you the kind of person that wants to actually bet on the future as opposed to work with certainty today? Last but not least, as we mentioned at the start of this video, if you want to qualify for the maximum loan amount, you might have to just take the lowest rate available this time because there is still a substantial divide, uh, approximately about seven to eight percent in the ability that you can qualify for on a fixed rate versus a variable rate today. I'd love to know in the comments below, if you're getting a house today and you know about these projections, are you picking a fixed rate or are you picking a variable rate? Let me know below.